Hello everyone, welcome again to my model railway. I've been doing a few video blogs and connect up the Arduinos with the JMRI and I'm going to continue this with do, trying to do occupied sentences. At the moment this is an end gauge so the current pulled by the trains is very very low so um, I wasn't able to use some of the stuff that I've seen on the blog on the, on the internet using some of the Arduino sensors. So I've tried to use a CT sensor and I've done a very basic setup, very basic code. I uh, don't know whether I'm going to go any further on the code because it seems to be working at the moment and I don't want anything to get too complicated too hard. And so I thought I'd just do this video showing you exactly what I've got set up to see if anyone's interested in doing the same thing because, um, and keep trying to keep things simple. So basically at the moment, doing the camera down here, I've got a CT transformer over here um, and connected, wrapped around it in this blue wire is the supply to the trap up there where the drain's sitting on at the moment, which has got an isolator um, here. So when it goes beyond this point here, it'd be outside that 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 the power for that part of the track. Um, from the CT from the CT transformer, the two wires coming out of the CT transformer are just going onto my breadboard, and from the breadboard, they're just two wires picked off, and they're going straight into the Arduino, and they're on its ground and A1 for the analog input. I've got no burden resistors, I've got no other components, just CT straight into the Arduino um, to try and keep things simpler. I might try it with a burden resistor and stuff up later on to see whether it makes any difference, but like I say, I'm not having too much of a problem at the moment. Um, let's put the camera down a minute. So looking at the Arduino code over here, um, the basic top part is no different to any other programs that I've shown um, with the CMRI and um, .h libraries. And the um, auto 485.h is still in there for later on. Um, I've got a CT which connects up to A1, said. I'm going to take a reading, so I've got some variables up here. Um, it's an array here for reading it 100 times. I'm going to take 100 readings of the um, this track because it, it gets me, it, the readings are all over the place really to take one. Um, so I'm going to get an average, average of the readings. Um, LED is only there. So surely, purely for me to see what's going on, doesn't have to be here. So I'll do a for loop. The for loop is going to take the hundred readings, like I said, put them into the array, um, and the um, add 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 each each reading t together to make up one complete reading, um, and then we're going to divide that reading by hundred, so we end up with um, the average of the hundred readings. And I found that if the readings greater than 16 that means something's on the track like the train. The train reads about 27 um, to 30 and if I put a 10 kilo ohm resistor on there it reads um, between 19 to 24 so anything over 16 I'm going to send to the JMRI um, on bit 0 I'm going to send it a 1 to say we're occupied and if it's not uh, greater than 16 then if it's less then I'm going to send the bit zero to say we're not occupied. So it's basic, very basic program. Um, setting the, the average back to zero. Well that should be the reading I think. Uh, no the average back to zero is right. And I put a five five delay, millisecond delay just to um, start down a bit. Don't know whether I need that really but um, it seems to work at the moment. So I'll just do a demonstration. Um, this is the JMRI layout at the moment which I've just got two turnouts and a, a piece of track um, just for purely for testing this part, I'll just bring up the throttle and my sensor. So I've set up the sensor as 1001. As I've said before, it's a uh, bit zero, so I've got a one at the end, and I'm going to address one, no one. And it's showing you there it's, it's active because the train's on the track at the moment. And then I've set up this um, track to be occupied. If I go down to edit, create the blog and on the sensor I've selected the 01 on the sensor. I've not changed any other things, it's all basically the same. Red when it's occupied, black when it's not occupied. So at the moment as you see it's red because the train's sitting on the track. And just bring up the fossil. And if I now go forward on my throttle and bring this train over here forward and it comes outside this occupied site system, you'll see that this will go black. There you go, train's left the system and it's gone black up here. And if I reverse the train back in, 
we should have gone a bit further. And the change just got lost. Lost. Can't. <laughs> I've gone a bit too far now. I'll bring it forward again. Right, so a bit of a mess up there, but I've got some dirty bits of track, so the train got stuck. Um, but it's, it, it's now in the occupied bit, as you can see. And it's gone red for occupied. I just do another demonstration again. But I'll go forward again, take it out of the area. There you go, it's right out of the area now, and I'll bring it back. There you go, back in the area. Um, so it seems to work quite well. Um, like I say, don't know where I'm going to go with this yet. It's it's doing what I want it to do, and the code's very basic. Um, and I'll have to see whether it causes any problems with having multiples of these sending the data up to JMRI. I might have to make a data package rather than sending it every five milliseconds. But anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I'll update as much as I can as and when I build some more.